What's up YouTube? Today, we're going to be installing the Cobb access port on the 2018 WRX. Um, but I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, what the Cobb access port does for people who are maybe new to the Subaru scene or this is your first tuner car. Um, and then also uh, the different options that are out there for engine management products. Um, so we'll kind of start at the base level. So the engine management products, the two most popular ones for Subaru is, at least in the US, is definitely the Cobb access port. Then there's also um, Ecutech. Uh, so they're just two different brands that essentially, they have a little bit different features, but at the core, what they're designed to do is allow you to be able to get into the car's ECU and adjust the engine parameters, such as you know how much boost you're getting from the turbo, the air fuel ratio, how much fuel your car is getting at various RPMs, the ignition timing, and so on. So they really get the same job done, which is being able to tune your car, which is adjusting these parameters to be able to maximize the power that your car is making. So that's kind of the base of what these do at the core. You're accessing the ECU to upload a more ideal map, which has the parameters should make more power given the mods that you have. So this is the Cobb access port. It's sort of like a cell phone looking little handheld electronic device. And then it also comes um, with a mount and some other accessories, but the OBD2 cable, which this gives it the actual access to your ECU. Um, and so here is the box it came in. And so they have specific versions depending on the generation of your car. So you'll wanna get that, um, make sure you get the right one. So the big reason why people like to do this is because the factory ECU is, Subaru has to consider a lot of different um, things when they're tuning the car. They have to consider that the car has to work in all elevations, that the car has to work in all climates, that it has to pass um, emissions tests. So when they're set, when they're tuning the engine at the factory, they're not, 100% tuning it just to squeeze the most performance out of the engine. Um, so the access port allows us to um, adjust the engine and the parameters so that we can do that, especially based on the specific mods you have. Um, so you're gonna get a few benefits. You're gonna get, of course, like better throttle response. You're going to be able to remap the throttle input, which is a huge one, I think, on these cars. Um, the throttle map from the factory, you'll notice it's kind of, it has like some dead space. So you start pushing on the gas and nothing really happens for like the first 10% or maybe even 20% of the pedal. Then all of a sudden it feels like that you go from like barely pushing it to the engine revving super fast. Um, and that's the throttle map is not very linear. It's like you're pushing, 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 nothing, nothing, and then woo. Uh, so with the access port, it allows you to remap that and get you more of a linear pedal feel so that your brain is connecting more with, okay, I'm giving it just a little bit more input and the engine is giving it a little more gas. Um, <clears throat> so that is another benefit too, is the drivability is much better. So now let's talk about um, on the access port, when you're uploading the maps onto your ECU, there's what comes preloaded on it is stage zero, which is basically a copy of the factory tune. There's stage one, low wastegate, and stage one, high wastegate. You should always start with the low wastegate map. Um, read the map notes, it'll tell you what the target boost is. Um, and once you upload that map, you can check your boost you're getting versus the target. Um, it just depends on they have these two variations just so you can kind of dial it into your car specifically in it a little bit better and you just want to make sure you're not over boosting um, so you plug this guy in which we're going to show you you upload the map to the ecu and stage one is basically just your car is stock with uh maybe a catback or muffler deletes and 
it's going to have the optimized map for that set of mods. So with stage one, you're gonna notice a lot better drivability, not necessarily a ton more power. Um, with the stage two map, that adds a catted downpipe. The downpipe connects directly to the turbo and removes a lot of restriction caused by the factory downpipe. And so the stage two map, that's where you're gonna start noticing like a pretty significant difference in power output. Um, and then there's, if you go on Cobb's website, you can also find some uh, customized maps like stage one with Mishimoto intake. Um, but what you always want to do, in my opinion, is you always wanna go with either an e-tune, which is getting a tune from a tuner remotely. You send them data logs, which this records, basically you're driving, and this will record what the ECU is seeing in terms of you know how the engine's running. You send it to the tuner, the tuner makes adjustments, and you do this back and forth a few times to get the optimized, like we said, parameters for your specific car and your specific tunes. You're going to get a much better running engine and more power output versus just going with a OTS tune or off the shelf map, which is what comes preloaded on here. You can also do a dyno tune. That's where they load your car up on a dyno and then the car, they run through the dyno. The dyno measures the power output from the car and they're able to simulate obviously, um, you know, rear wheel, real world driving on the dyno and they tune your car accordingly to make the most power for your specific mods. There's a lot of mods um, like TGV, EGR delete on these cars that you have to get a custom tune. Um, you never want to run more mods or different mods than the map says um, without you know making sure you have the proper tune so that's basically what the access port does a big caveat of the access port which this is hotly debated on the forums and the groups and everything um, is how this goes along with the factory warranty obviously this is a brand new car um, so the best bet is this is not a approved Subaru accessory. You're going in, you're changing the parameters of the engine that Subaru has tuned themselves to something different. So you're really rolling the dice. Um, it depends a lot on your specific dealer um, and the relationship you have with them and how they kind of deal with modified cars if you have an issue. My suggestion to you is if you cannot bear the possibility of having to replace an engine, you know, at four or five thousand um, dollars, if something goes catastrophically wrong, then I wouldn't do it. I, the risk is not; it's too great. Um, cars really don't—they don't have issues very often. But you can't just assume that you're going to have your car completely covered under the warranty when you do, when you modify your car really in general, especially for more power. So that's where I'm gonna leave that. I know people have varying opinions on it, but the safe bet is don't do it unless you're willing to take that risk, um, at least of the possibility of that happening. So um, with that, we are going to start by uploading a stage one tune to this car. And I'm gonna show you guys how that process goes um, on here and kind of some of the different features with the access port. We are on October 11th going to get this car dyno tuned back to back with my buddy Christian's 2016 STI. So that should be a fun video. Um, you guys will see same day, same dyno, same tuner um, to kind of see how the two cars do back to back on the dyno. So um, we're going to go ahead and connect the cable here and get started on updating the ECU uh, to the stage one map. All right, so for the first step, we're going to connect the OBD2 cable, um, which the OBD2 is connected down here, right next to where the trunk release is basically. And then we're going to connect the access port, just like that. All right, so we got a little, it gives you instructions of 
um, what each of these buttons does basically. And um, as you go through, it's pretty simple, the install. It tells you, so right here it just says, um, install your access port with your vehicle. We say yes. So now it's um, communicating with the car. So we need to turn the ignition switch to the on position. All right, confirm that your vehicle matches the, the identification results, which is 2018 USDM WRX manual transmission. That is correct. All right, so now it's showing the different maps available. There's anti-theft mode, um, which basically makes it so your car won't start, stage zero, stage one, uh, 91 octane, there's maps specific to the octane, whether you're on the East Coast, West Coast, whatever's available to you. Um, we have a, in Oregon, it's 92 octane. So we're going with the 91 map here. So there's uh, the 91, stage one, 91 octane, regular and stage one, 91 octane high waste gate. The high waste gate is going to boost more than the standard. So we wanna start with the standard see where the boost ends up. If we're below our target, we go to the high waste gate map. If we're at our target, we stay. So that's kind of where we do there. Then you got your 93 maps. Um, there's an economy mode map, a valet mode, um, which the valet mode, I believe, just only allows the engine to rev to like 4,000 RPM or something like that. The economy mode is supposed to be to help you get better fuel economy. Um, and then we got our stage two maps for 91, 93 octane. Um, and then stage two uh, economy mode map, valet mode map. And then I have some uh, leftover custom tune maps here. So um, what we're gonna do is we're going to go to the stage one, 91 octane standard map. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so they rec now there's a screen that says a battery charger is recommended. Turn off your headlights, stereo, everything else um, so that the car uses the least amount of power um, possible. So we're gonna do that. You definitely, the reason why is you don't want your battery to die while you're doing this or you could brick your ECU basically um, and it would be not great. So what we're gonna do is we're going to um, initialize this process and I'm going to show you guys a timer of how long it takes to initially um, get the access port installed. It's going to copy the map that is on your car. Then it's going to install the new map, um, which is when the access port is married to your car. Um, this takes a, a little bit longer than I think a lot of people expect it to. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how long it takes on my car. So if it seems like it takes a while on yours, um, you know, this is kind of the amount of time to expect. So here we go. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get this underway here. So we're going to start the process. And here we go. All right, guys, so now we have to turn the ignition to the off position uh, to re-begin the vehicle initialization. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so for the the installation was successful. Um, so now we just turn the vehicle off for at least 15 seconds and before starting the vehicle. So now we are ready to actually start the car. So you can see that it took about six minutes to go through the procedure. I know when we turned the car off, I didn't time it. That went really quick, but this gives you guys an idea of potentially how long it's gonna to take to fully flash the vehicle over. All right, you guys, now that we've got the access port loaded up, I wanna run through the different menu options with you guys so you can kind of see what that's about. So right off the bat, um, we have the gauges menu here. 
which if you click on that, that'll bring up what you are actively observing um, or your live gauges on the access port. Obviously, um, the car's not running right now, so there's not much to show, but we have it set at boost, find knock learn, AF learning one, which is air fuel, air fuel sensor one ratio, dynamic advanced multi and feedback knock. So this is like a good starting point for the gauges you wanna monitor um, for the critical components, just to make sure nothing's off. Um, it'll show you the high and low, that's what these bottom sections are for. So it's current, high and low. Um, so you can keep an eye on that. You can see down here, it says press OK to start data logging. And at the top it says not logging. So if you want to make a data log, um, which the you can adjust what is on this live view as well as what the access port records in the background. So when you press this data logging in the background, it's going to be recording uh, even more parameters than this. And it'll put it into basically a spreadsheet that you can download later and review. And this is the way that you're going to do, if you're going to go with an e-tune, you'll, um, your tuner will tell you how to record the files or what you should be doing while you record them. You'll send him that data and based on what is um, recorded, he'll make adjustments for you. Um, and then, you know, that's how the tune goes. And then you'll go back and forth a few times and that's how you get it tuned. So, that's probably what most people, you'll have it on the gauge screen if it's plugged in. Under performance here, you have zero to 60 mile per hour timer, which it bases it off the ECU data. So it can see the mile per hour that the car is uh, currently traveling at. So it will measure, you know, how quickly the ECU records zero to 60. Um, on the quarter mile time, it'll um, calculate, you know, based on distance traveled um, and time, how quickly your car completes a quarter mile. So this is kind of a, a fun thing to mess around with, especially if you get retuned with mods to see how much of a difference it made. So going down here to the troubleshooting screen, this is where you can see emissions readiness to see if the car is going to give you any trouble during emissions testing. Um, memory snapshot, so reads the current memory state from the ECU and reads code. So if you have check engine lights, you can come in here and uh, find out why there's a check engine light triggered. And after you address the issue, you can reset the codes basically, um, which, so, you know, once you fix the problem, you wanna reset the code so it goes away and hopefully it doesn't come back. So that's a nice little, you basically have an OBD2 scanner built in. So now coming under the tune screen, the first option is adjustments, adjust the ECU. So you can adjust idle, flat foot shifting, launch control, and then reset flat foot shifting and launch control. So flat foot shifting is when you're flooring the vehicle and you go to shift, it allows you to set an RPM that the car will hold at so that you don't have to take your foot off the gas. So let's say you rev it up to 7,000 RPM and you're gonna shift while you're flooring it, you can just stick the clutch in while still flooring the gas. The ECU will basically cut the throttle until you get to a certain RPM. Um, and so like here it's set at 5,500. So it'll go down from 7,000 to 5,500. And if you don't complete the shift by 5,500, the car will hold the RPMs at 5,500 for you until you complete it. So it allows for quicker shifting and you also don't have to go on and off the gas pedal physically, um, which can save you a little bit of time in competitive situations. Launch control, you just set the RPM you want so that you can just, when you're not moving, you can floor it with the clutch in and the engine will rev to this RPM and just hold there um, so that you can launch the car. You let the clutch out then. So the next moving on to the next thing here oh so under tunes we have going out from the adjusting screen we have change maps so this is where you're going to be able to upload either like a custom tune or let's say you uh, get a downpipe and want to go to the stage two tune so you can either do a real-time flash or a reflash the real time is basically a more or less so a temporary flash it'll stay on your car until the ecu um, loses power is reset. So this is great for like valet mode, uh, maybe, or, you know, an economy map mode if you're on a road trip. 
uh, where you just basically want a temporary map uploaded. So, um, but if you're going to something like you have a new tune or you're going to stage two, you definitely want to reflash because that makes it, uh, you know, stay on the ECU somewhat. I mean, it's not permanent, but it won't be reset unless you unmarry the access port or reflash again. So then down here we have restore um, OTS maps. If you need that, show current map. So you click that, that'll show you what your current map is under the real time and reflash, which we're on right now on stage 191 octane. Obviously we just installed that. Then of course there's the uninstall button, uh, which unmarries the access port if you're going back to stock or you just wanna take it off or whatever. So that's a basic overview of the different features in the menu of the access port. Um, there's also more customization you can do, but um, this should be a good guide to help you get started. All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful and, and informative. Um, people who already know about the access port, obviously this is redundant, but if you're new to Subarus, um, I hope this helps you understand um, what the access port does and kind of uh, the do's and don'ts of it. Just remember, you have to run a map for your specific mods. You can't just throw on a stage two map and then put in, uh, you know, TGV, EGR deletes and um, a bigger turbo. You have to be, uh, once you start tuning, you got to be tuned for the proper part. So, um, you know, this is a really fun mod. It makes the car a lot more fun to drive, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, you guys just got to decide if this is what you want to do. So if you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them below. Um, and thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more content like this. And we'll catch you guys next time.